It's lonely tonight. For me too. Here, let me open that up for you. The casting process for the 1978 TV series Dallas was a meticulous task with each character requiring a unique blend of personality and talent to bring the Ewing family to life. For the role of J.R. Ewing, Larry Hagman was a clear choice. Having previously worked with the show's producer, Lorimar, on I Dream of Jeannie, Hagman's audition solidified his selection. His portrayal of the cunning and ruthless oil tycoon would become iconic. Barbara Bel Geddes, as Miss Ella Ewing, was chosen for her warmth and nurturing spirit the producers wanted a stark contrast to Hagman's character, and Bel Geddes fit the bill perfectly. Jim Davis, who played the patriarch, John Ross Jock Ewing Sr., was a seasoned actor with a strong presence. His chemistry with Bel Geddes was undeniable, making them believable as a long-married couple. The role of Bobby Ewing, J.R.'s brother, was offered to Patrick Duffy. His boyish charm and vulnerability provided a compelling counterbalance to Hagman's manipulative character. Victoria Principal, as Pamela Barnes Ewing, was chosen for her beauty and acting range. Her character's complex relationship with J.R. added another layer to the show's dynamic. The casting of Linda Gray as Sue Ellen Ewing was also significant. Her character's struggle with alcoholism and J.R.'s mistreatment made her a sympathetic figure, despite her husband's villainous actions. In conclusion, the casting of Dallas was a careful process with each actor's unique qualities contributing to the show's enduring success. I've been trying to sort out my life. Now, Pam, you and I had a couple of real nice days together. The directorial vision behind the 1978 TV series Dallas was mainly shaped by Leonard Katzman. Katzman's approach was to create a compelling drama that revolved around the Ewing family's power struggles, both in business and personal relationships. His creative influences included film noir and melodrama, which he cleverly blended to create a unique style. Katzman's directorial style was characterized by his ability to build tension and suspense, often using close-ups and dramatic lighting. He was also known for his skill in directing ensemble casts, eliciting powerful performances from his actors. Katzman's collaborative spirit was evident in his work with the Dallas cast and crew. He fostered a creative environment where ideas were freely exchanged and everyone felt valued and heard. To bring the story to life, Katzman worked closely with the show's writers to develop compelling storylines and complex characters. He also collaborated with the production design team to create the iconic South Fork Ranch set, which became synonymous with the Dallas brand. Katzman's attention to detail extended to every aspect of the production, from casting to editing, resulting in a high-quality show that resonated with audiences. Katzman's approach to directing Dallas was not just about telling a story. It was about creating a world that viewers wanted to be a part of. He achieved this by focusing on the characters' desires, fears, and motivations, making them relatable and engaging. Katzman's vision for Dallas has left an indelible mark on television history, inspiring countless other shows and continuing to captivate audiences today. I think I better get to it. Uh, specifically, the uh, heavy machinery plants on in Galveston. Dallas is a classic TV series that first aired in 1978 and left a lasting impact on audiences with its mix of drama, scandal, and larger-than-life characters. Set in the world of Texas oil tycoons, the show followed the Ewing family and their never-ending power struggles. Throughout its 14-season run, Dallas provided viewers with many memorable moments, from shocking plot twists to heartwarming reunions. You'll discover some surprising and funny, sad, and shocking facts about this iconic show as you continue watching this video. One of the most unforgettable scenes from Dallas is undoubtedly the Who Shot J.R. Cliffhanger from Season 3, which had audiences around the world on the edge of their seats. This iconic moment not only made headlines but also cemented Dallas's place in television history. When it comes to favorite characters, it's hard to choose just one. Each character brought something unique to the table, from the cunning and ruthless J.R. Ewing to the strong-willed and resilient Sue Ellen. Do you have a favorite Dallas character? or a cherished memory related to the show? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Whether you were captivated by the drama, the romance, or the larger-than-life characters, Dallas has left a lasting impact on viewers for generations. So, share your thoughts and join the conversation. Everything's fine at home. You have your job whenever you want it, so maybe you should just... The production of the 1978 TV series Dallas took place primarily in Southern California despite the show's Texas setting. 
the South Fork Ranch, a central location, was filmed at a real-life ranch in Parker, Texas, but the interior scenes were shot in a studio. The set design was meticulously crafted to resemble a grand Texan ranch. The Ewing family's mansion was built on a soundstage, complete with lavish furniture, opulent decor, and state-of-the-art appliances of the time. The set included an impressive swimming pool, horse stables, and expansive gardens, enhancing the show's depiction of wealth and grandeur. Filming the series was not without logistical challenges. The large cast and crew required careful coordination, especially during exterior shots at the South Fork Ranch. Additionally, the show's extensive running time, often exceeding an hour, demanded a high volume of filming. Despite these challenges, the production team employed innovative techniques to enhance the viewing experience. They used cutting-edge video editing equipment to seamlessly integrate exterior and interior shots, creating a seamless transition between the real Texas ranch and the constructed studio sets. The show's lighting was also noteworthy. The production team used advanced lighting equipment to create a distinct visual style, bathing the Ewing mansion in warm, inviting tones to contrast with the often cutthroat and dramatic events unfolding within. In conclusion, the production of Dallas combined careful set design, innovative techniques, and meticulous logistical planning to create a captivating and enduring TV series. I was hoping that by him going into a new field, maybe we could get back together again. Dallas, a TV series that aired from 1978 to 1991, is known for its high production value, primetime slot, and soap opera style. The show centers around the Ewing family, particularly the ambitious and ruthless J.R., played by Larry Hagman. J.R.'s character is a slick, dirty, and aggressive antagonist who excels at playing the game better and harder than anyone else. His brother Bobby, who serves as a counterbalance to J.R., is fair and tough. Their mother, Miss Ellie, and sister, Lucy, play minor roles and have side stories that help balance the script. Sue Ellen and Cliff Barnes are often the targets of J.R.'s schemes and feuds. The character development in Dallas is one of its strengths. Jock Ewing, the father and head of the family, is a mean and determined oilman who keeps J.R. in line. However, when Jock dies, the show becomes too focused on J.R., which leads to a decline in the quality of the series. After six years, Dallas runs out of good ideas and becomes formulaic, with stories revolving around who is having sex with whom and what misunderstandings or business deals gone wrong will happen next. The show's decline is evident in the Who Shot JR storyline, which attracted a lot of attention, but also marked the beginning of the end for Dallas. The show's ratings began to decline, and the cast started leaving or being replaced with new actors playing the same characters. The stories became more and more over the top, and the final three years of the series were particularly ugly. Despite its decline, Dallas remains an iconic TV show, and JR is a TV character icon. The show's high budget and primetime slot helped it set the standard for TV soaps. While the series went on for too long, Dallas will always be remembered for its juicy script, memorable characters, and high production value. Overall, I would give Dallas a 7 or 8 out of 10 stars. Sly, you know what's the matter with that man? He never knew when to trust me. The creation of the musical score and soundtrack for the 1978 TV series Dallas was a collaborative effort between composers Gerald Immel, Morton Stevens, and Nelson Riddle. The music they created complemented the narrative and emotional tone of the show, which revolved around the Ewing family and their intrigues in the Texas oil business. Gerald Immel, who composed the iconic Dallas theme, aimed to capture the essence of the Ewing family's power and wealth. The driving, triumphant melody reflected their success and ambition while the use of strings and brass created a sense of drama and tension. Immel also composed incidental music for the series, using a variety of styles to underscore different scenes and moods. Morton Stevens, known for his work on Hawaii Five-0, contributed to the Dallas soundtrack with his distinctive blend of orchestral and electronic elements. His music added a modern edge to the show, reflecting its contemporary setting and themes. Stevens' compositions ranged from tense, suspenseful pieces to lush, romantic melodies, enhancing the emotional impact of the scenes they accompanied. Nelson Riddle, a legendary arranger and composer, joined the Dallas team later in the series' run. His contributions included big band-style arrangements and lush, sweeping orchestrations that evoked the grandeur of the Texan setting. Riddle's music added a touch of class and sophistication to the show, reflecting the opulent lifestyle of the Ewing family. 
The musicians involved in the creation of the Dallas score and soundtrack were highly skilled and experienced professionals. Many had worked on other successful TV shows and films, bringing their expertise and creativity to the Dallas Project. The composers and musicians worked closely together, crafting music that perfectly complemented the narrative and emotional tone of the series. In summary, the musical score and soundtrack for Dallas were essential components of the show's success. The composers and musicians created a rich, varied musical tapestry that enhanced the drama, emotion, and tension of the series, leaving a lasting impact on viewers and helping to establish Dallas as a cultural touchstone of the 1980s. Cliff, may I see you for a moment? Yeah. Charlene Tilton is unique for appearing as Lucy Ewing in all three series of the Dallas franchise. Meanwhile, Larry Hagman, who played J.R. Ewing, holds the record for appearing in all 357 episodes of the original series. Interestingly, Hagman is the only original cast member who hails from Texas, with Susan Howard, who joined the cast as Donna Culver, being the other Texan. This goes to show that, while the show was set in Texas, not all of its stars called the Lone Star State home. Mama's sick and all. It's a risky venture. You know, oil business is never very certain. One of the most iconic scenes in the 1978 TV series Dallas is the cliffhanger ending of season three. Known as Who Shot J.R. J.R. Ewing, played by Larry Hagman, is shot by an unseen assailant, leaving audiences in suspense over the identity of the shooter. This scene is a masterclass in direction, performance, and cinematography. The scene is set in J.R.'s office, lit in a way that creates a tense and ominous atmosphere. The camera work is steady, focusing on JR's face and movements, building suspense as the scene progresses. The sound design is minimal, with only the ticking of a clock audible, adding to the tension. Larry Hagman's performance is exceptional. His portrayal of JR is layered and nuanced, making the character both hated and loved by audiences. In this scene, Hagman's facial expressions and body language convey JR's growing suspicion and fear making the moment of the shooting all the more shocking. The impact of this scene on the audience was immense. It sparked widespread speculation and theories, with audiences eagerly awaiting the answer in the next season. The scene also solidified Dallas as a must-watch TV series and contributed to its enduring popularity. Director Leonard Katzman later said, We had no idea it would create such a frenzy. It was just a way to end the season on a cliffhanger. Larry Hagman commented, It was a great way to keep the audience hooked. I had no idea it would become such a big deal. This scene is a testament to the power of suspenseful storytelling and iconic performances in TV history. Oh, it's so cute. It was just Clay, wasn't it? What do you mean? You know what I mean. Larry Hagman, known for his role in Dallas, had previously worked with Joan Van Ark in two different series. Interestingly, Dallas was initially meant to be a soap opera showcase for Victoria Principal. However, Hagman's popularity soon overshadowed principles, making him the show's main character. In the series, several female characters, including Miss Ellie, Sue Allen, and Donna Krebs, were part of a ladies' organization called the Daughters of the Alamo, or DOA for short. This organization added a unique layer to the show's storyline and characters. Good, so I'm... I stand by. It's a little late. The 1978 TV series Dallas had a significant cultural and social impact. The show, set in Texas, revolved around the wealthy Ewing family and their oil business, captivating audiences with its dramatic plot twists. Audiences were drawn to the show's soap opera-style storytelling, and it quickly became a hit. The character of J.R. Ewing, played by Larry Hagman, became a cultural icon, representing greed and cunning. His infamous line, I'm just a poor boy from Texas, summed up his character's ambition and desire for power. Dallas also had a profound impact on pop culture. The show's catchphrases, plot twists, and characters were frequently referenced in other media, and it sparked a wave of primetime soap operas. The show's iconic theme song is still recognized today. Moreover, Dallas contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. The show explored themes such as power, wealth, family dynamics, and morality, prompting viewers to reflect on these issues. The show's depiction of wealth and luxury was also a reflection of the economic climate of the 1980s. In conclusion, Dallas resonated with audiences, influenced pop culture, and contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. Its impact is still felt today, demonstrating the enduring appeal of dramatic storytelling and complex characters.
I wanted to talk to you last night, but you were so up, and then I was just too tired when we got home. Before appearing together on Dallas, Larry Hagman's future co-star, Charlene Tilton, used to visit Hagman's friend Richard Dawson on the set of Hogan's Heroes. Dawson would give Tilton gum and candy and take her around the set. Tilton was fired from Dallas in 1985 due to the writer's struggle to create new storylines for her character. She was rehired in 1988, but fired again in 1990 for the same reason. After the sixth season of Dallas, Barbara Bel Geddes suffered a heart attack and had to undergo emergency quadruple bypass surgery. As a result, she did not appear in the first 11 episodes of the seventh season while she was recovering. Oh, my. Why in the world did you pick this restaurant? The 1978 TV series Dallas received mixed reviews from critics when it first aired, but it was a hit with audiences. The show, which revolved around the wealthy Ewing family and their oil business, was known for its cliffhanger endings and soap opera style drama. Critics praised the show's pacing and ability to keep viewers hooked, with the New York Times calling it fast-paced and eminently watchable. However, others criticized the show for its melodramatic plotlines and shallow characters. Despite this, Dallas became one of the most popular shows of the 1980s, and its impact is still felt today. The show received several award nominations, including 11 Emmy nominations and four Golden Globe nominations and four Golden Globe nominations. Although it never won an Emmy, Dallas did win three Golden Globes, including Best Television Series, Drama in 1981. The awards and nominations that Dallas received are a testament to its popularity and cultural impact. The show's success helped to establish the primetime soap opera genre and solidified the careers of its cast members, including Larry Hagman, who played the iconic villain J.R. Ewing. The show's enduring popularity is evident in the numerous reboots and spin-offs that have been produced in the decades since its initial run. In conclusion, while Dallas received mixed reviews from critics, its popularity with audiences, and its impact on the television industry cannot be denied. The show's award nominations and wins are a reflection of its cultural significance and the enduring appeal of its characters and storylines. Why? Well, knowing BD like I do, I thought he'd be out for your blood. He seemed reasonable. Even before Dallas first aired, Kathy Podewell, Victoria Principal, and Charlene Tilton were already fans of Larry Hagman, who starred in I Dream of Jeannie. Interestingly, Hagman and his former Dallas co-star, Steve Canale, lived in the same area. Hagman's battle with alcoholism became a challenge while filming Dallas, as he drank up to five bottles of champagne daily due to boredom and the monotony of his role. Despite this, Hagman claimed that his tolerance for alcohol never caused him to miss work or ruin any takes. His dedication to his craft remained unwavering, even in the face of personal struggles. Tell you myself, before you heard it from somebody else. Cliff, why should I care about The filming of the 1978 TV series Dallas was filled with interesting anecdotes that reveal a lot about the cast and crew's experiences during production. For instance, Larry Hagman, who played the infamous J.R. Ewing, was known for his sense of humor on set. He would often play practical jokes, such as hiding fake spiders in the actresses' trailers to scare them. The show's creator, David Jacobs, had initially envisioned Dallas as a miniseries, but its popularity led to it being turned into a full-fledged series. The iconic South Fork Ranch, which served as the Ewing family's home, was not actually located in Dallas, but in Parker, Texas, about 25 miles away. The show's success was also due in part to the intense rivalry between J.R. and his brother Bobby, played by Patrick Duffy. The two actors were actually good friends off-screen, but they managed to bring a palpable tension to their on-screen interactions. Behind the scenes, the show's writers were constantly trying to come up with new ways to keep the audience engaged. One of the most memorable storylines, J.R.'s shooting in the season 3 cliffhanger, was reportedly conceived during a late-night brainstorming session. Despite the show's glamorous exterior, filming was not always easy. The Texas heat often made it difficult for the cast and crew to work long hours, and there were occasional mishaps, such as when a horse slipped on the set and injured an actor. Overall, the making of Dallas was a complex and challenging process, but the end result was a show that captivated audiences for over a decade. The cast and crew's dedication and hard work as well as the show's memorable characters and storylines have left a lasting impact on television history. Be J.R. Ewing if you didn't. <laughs> yeah.
to read Jay Wilson's characters in Dallas, and Walker, Texas Ranger, both suffered fatal gunshot wounds. In Dallas, April Stevens Ewing was shot during her honeymoon to Bobby Ewing and died shortly after. Alex Cahill Walker met her end in the Walker, Texas Ranger trial by fire reunion movie, shot in the courthouse, and left to die with Chuck Norris's character not present to save her. Initially, the writers of Dallas considered replacing Jim Davis, who played Jock Ewing, but decided to keep the character alive until early 1982 when he was killed off in a plane crash. This decision was made out of respect for Davis, who had played the role since the show's inception. Larry Hagman, who played J.R. Ewing, was not the first choice for the role. Robert Foxworth had been offered the part, but Hagman won it over by insisting on playing a character that was not completely unsympathetic. Sick, you know, she needs to know her family loves her. No need to worry about Pam. Mom and I will visit her. The 1978 TV series Dallas holds a significant place in film history, known for its compelling storylines and memorable characters. It brought the primetime soap opera genre to new heights, focusing on the wealthy Ewing family and their sprawling Texas cattle ranch, South Fork. Dallas is remembered for its intriguing plot twists, such as the Who Shot J.R. mystery that captivated audiences worldwide. This cliffhanger ending of the 1979-1980 season became a cultural phenomenon demonstrating the show's immense popularity and influence on future television storytelling. The series also had a lasting impact on fashion and pop culture, popularizing the power suit and cowboy hat for both men and women. Furthermore, it inspired numerous other primetime dramas, such as Dynasty, Falcon Crest, and Knott's Landing, which followed the Dallas formula of exploring the complex lives of the wealthy and powerful. Dallas paved the way for the current golden age of television with its serialized storytelling and character development. Its success showed that audiences were eager for more complex and nuanced narratives, leading to the creation of critically acclaimed shows like The Sopranos, Breaking Bad, and Mad Men. In addition, Dallas has had a lasting impact on the film and television industry through the careers of its talented cast members, including Larry Hagman, Patrick Duffy, and Victoria Principal. These actors have left indelible marks on the entertainment world, inspiring future generations of performers. In short, Dallas has made a significant contribution to film history, shaping the way stories are told on television and leaving a lasting impact on popular culture. Its influence can still be seen in contemporary television, making it a crucial piece of the medium's evolution. Entirely at fault. We have to create the impression that West Star is the innocent... Barbara Bel Geddes, who played Miss Ellie on Dallas, led a busy life while filming the series. Despite being based in New York City, she commuted to Texas every weekend to be with her family. Meanwhile, Larry Hagman, who played her on-screen son J.R., formed a strong bond with Victoria Principal, who played his romantic interest Pam. Despite their character's animosity, Hagman and Principal enjoyed each other's company, and Hagman even served as a mentor to Principal on set. Interestingly, although Hagman played Bel Geddes' son on the show, he was actually only nine years younger than her in real life. This age difference was just one of many surprising facts about the cast of Dallas, which became a cultural phenomenon during its run. The show's complex characters and engaging storylines kept viewers hooked for years, and the chemistry between the actors was a key part of its success. That's it. Just wanted to clear the air. Actress Barbara Bel Geddes and actor Patrick Duffy shared a close bond both on and off the set of the TV series Dallas. Duffy's real-life father had worked with Bel Geddes, and this connection added to their strong relationship. Bel Geddes and Duffy were often in scenes together, and Duffy spoke fondly of his time working with her. However, Bel Geddes left the show one season before its end due to health issues. In addition to their on-screen relationship in Dallas, Duffy played Sasha Mitchell's uncle in the TV series Step by Step. This connection between the two shows highlights the interconnectedness of the acting world. Larry Hagman, who played J.R. on Dallas, had a real-life drinking problem that mirrored his character's heavy drinking on the show. In 1995, Hagman received a liver transplant, and his character also stopped drinking in the TV movie Dallas J.R. Returns. This parallel between Hagman's real life and his character's storyline demonstrates the blurred lines between fiction and reality in the world of acting. Except for a small town like Emporia. It's not that different, Bob. Still in the United States. Well, I... Throughout the run of Dallas, Miss Ellie had two powerful husbands. Her first, Jock Ewing, 
was an oil tycoon who could be manipulative and evil. Her second husband, Clayton Farlow, was wealthy and occasionally hot-tempered. Larry Hagman, who played J.R. Ewing, wasn't the first choice for the role. It was initially offered to Robert Foxworth, who declined as he felt the character needed to be softened. Hagman's wife encouraged him to audition, and despite being typecast due to his role in I Dream of Jeannie, he won the part. The roles of J.R., Ray Krebs, Bobby Ewing, Pamela, and Sue Ellen were initially offered to Robert Foxworth, Ken Kerchival, Steve Canale, Linda Evans, and Mary Fran, respectively. However, the actors who eventually got these roles left an indelible mark on the series. The casting changes proved to be a fortunate turn of events for the show. I think I'm going to be sad when you go to Dallas. Larry Hagman, in a Dallas episode, read a letter from his television father, despite having lost his own father before the show's start. In a curious incident, an airplane pilot once threatened not to land unless Victoria Principal revealed who shot J.R. a Dallas movie with the original cast was announced in 1983, but unfortunately, it was never made. These anecdotes highlight the enduring popularity of the show and the impact it had on both the entertainment industry and its audience. You came here looking for some sort of a sitcom version of a father who would sing you lullabies and tuck you in bed at night. When Barbara Bel Geddes left Dallas in 1984, Larry Hagman suggested his real-life mother, Mary Martin, for the role of Miss Ellie. The show reached its peak on November 21, 1980, with the episode Who Done It, attracting 83 million viewers in the U.S. and over 300 million worldwide. This episode held the record for the highest rating for a single episode of a television series in American history until the goodbye, farewell, and a man episode of MASH in 1983. Bel Geddes was referred to as Mama by her co-stars Hagman and Patrick Duffy, highlighting the close-knit bond between the cast members. Right into the laps of the respectable. I want... Larry Hagman, known for his role in Dallas, celebrated his 81st birthday in Texas, with co-star Linda Gray hosting a luncheon in his honor. Interestingly, years before, in the movie The Graduate, a leg seen on a marquee display, which belonged to a woman putting on stockings, was rumored to be Linda Gray's due to her well-built legs. In contrast, Patrick Duffy, another Dallas cast member, expressed dissatisfaction with the show's final episode, stating that it deviated from the format that had defined the series. Despite their individual opinions, the impact of Dallas and its talented cast continues to resonate with audiences, transcending generations, and leaving a lasting impression on television history. Well, I don't believe that. Why don't you get back on the phone and look around a little more? Yeah, Bally, can I talk to you a minute? Just a second, Jim. In 1981, Delta Burke was set to join the cast of Dallas as Catherine Wentworth, but had to decline due to her commitment to the show's spoof, Filthy Rich. That same year, Larry Hagman, known for his role on Dallas, regularly sent birthday flowers to his former co-star Kathy Podwell. Meanwhile, Jim Davis, who played Jock Ewing, filmed all his scenes for the fourth season while undergoing chemotherapy. He continued to do so until his health deteriorated, making it impossible to conceal his condition with prosthetics or makeup. It's okay, Bobby. It's just lunch. In the long-running TV series Dallas, character names were sometimes inspired by real people involved in the production. For instance, the surname Farlow, carried by characters Clayton and his son Dusty, comes from Wayne F. Farlow, the show's production manager. Clayton's first wife and Dusty's mother also shared the maiden name Wayne. Throughout its run in the 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s, only 15 actors consistently played the same characters. This group includes Larry Hagman as J.R. Ewing, Patrick Duffy as Bobby Ewing, Ken Kerchival as Cliff Barnes, and Linda Gray as Sue Ellen Ewing, among others. Among these 15 was Larry Hagman, who, according to his former co-star Charlene Tilton, played a significant role in her life off-screen. While Tilton was a teenager and residing with her single mother, Hagman stepped in, becoming a surrogate father and teaching her professional behavior during their time together on Dallas. Miss Jerry, that must have been it. Some patients run. In the making of the 1978 TV series Dallas, several interesting facts come to light. For instance, only two actresses were aware of the script of the famous Who Shot J.R. episode. Lorraine Desprez was one, and the other was Linda Gray. Gray had to keep this secret even from her castmates during the production hiatus. 
It was only when the cast and crew learned who the shooter was that Gray recorded the line. It was you, Kristen. You shot J.R. Victoria Principal, who played Pamela Barnes Ewing, was another Dallas cast member with an interesting fact. Like her co-star Larry Hagman, Principal resided in Malibu, California. Another notable detail from the early episodes of Dallas involves the characters Lucy, played by Charlene Tilton, and Ray, portrayed by Steve Canale. In these episodes, Lucy and Ray were often depicted as lovers. However, when it was revealed that Ray was Jock's illegitimate son, and therefore Lucy's uncle, the show never mentioned their affair again. Uh, give me a few minutes to relax. Yes, sir. You're not really going to have to serve. Barbara Bel Geddes' departure from Dallas in 1984 led to Larry Hagman's suggestion of replacing her with his real-life mother, Mary Martin. However, Donna Reed took on the role temporarily. Hagman held his idol, Jim Davis, in high regard, who played his television father on Dallas until his death in 1981. Patrick Duffy was initially considered for the role of Bobby Ewing, beating out Steve Canale, who then played Ray Krebs. These behind-the-scenes facts add depth to the series, showcasing the relationships and connections between the cast members. The casting decisions and personal connections of the actors contributed to the show's dynamic and enduring success. Son, you're doing pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> In the primetime soap opera Dallas, which aired from 1978 to 2014, both J.R. and Bobby Ewing were popular with female characters. However, Bobby, portrayed by Patrick Duffy, differed from his brother J.R., played by Larry Hagman, as Bobby consistently prioritized his family and refrained from using his brother's cutthroat tactics. Despite this, Bobby's fair play often led to limited success compared to J.R.'s ruthless approach. Among the cast, only three actors appeared in all 14 seasons Larry Hagman, Patrick Duffy, and Ken Kercheval, who played Cliff Barnes. Notably, Hagman was the only actor to be a regular cast member in every season, while Kercheval was a recurring guest star in the first two seasons, and Duffy only appeared in the final scene of season 9. Following closely behind, Linda Gray, Steve Canale, and Don Starr each appeared in 13 seasons, though Starr was never a regular cast member. Interestingly, Larry Hagman claimed that Jeremy Wendell, played by William Smithers, received more fan mail than any other villain on the show. This revelation highlights the unexpected popularity of certain characters in Dallas. Despite the program's long-running success, it's the villains that sometimes capture viewers' attention and affection. I couldn't... Patrick Duffy, known for his role in Dallas, had a son, Connor Duffy, who appeared in the final episode as Little J.R. Interestingly, before Dallas began, Duffy was the only cast member who hadn't watched I Dream of Jeannie, which starred Larry Hagman, despite their familial friendship. When Bobby Ewing's return from the dead needed explaining, it was Duffy's wife who suggested the dream season concept. The directors are a little concerned that maybe you're too inexperienced. Linda Gray, who played Sue Ellen in Dallas, was let go during the eighth season after requesting to direct a few episodes. This decision was reversed when Larry Hagman, her co-star, threatened to quit in protest. The German broadcasting network ARD declined to air seven episodes from the first three seasons due to controversial storylines. Jim Davis, who played Jock Ewing, had a close bond with Victoria Principal, who resembled his late daughter. After his passing, he was buried with pictures of both of them. And these dates. Here's my book. Oh, I... The theme song of Dallas, a popular television show, was voted the best of all time in an entertainment weekly poll. When actor Steve Canale considered leaving the show due to insufficient character development, it was Larry Hagman who suggested making Ray Krebs Jock Ewing's illegitimate son to persuade Canale to stay. Unfortunately, the series was eventually canceled during its 14th season due to low ratings, with Hagman as one of its main stars. Bobby, Bobby, you've been a very bad boy. It's just a little losing. Larry Hagman, best known for his role in Dallas, celebrated his 70th birthday in 2001. Surprisingly, only his former co-star Charlene Tilton attended the party. Mary Crosby gained fame as the character who shot J.R. in Dallas. During his time on the show, Hagman voiced his frustration over not receiving residuals from his earlier series, I Dream of Jeannie. Um, James can do things. In the fourth season of Dallas, the character of J.R. Ewing became the center of media attention due to the Who Shot J.R. cliffhanger. 
actor Larry Hagman, who played JR, was holding out for a higher salary, which led to producers considering writing his character out of the show. However, network executives eventually conceded to Hagman's demands, and he returned to the show. The popularity of Dallas led to an influx of tourists visiting the real-life South Fork Ranch House, owned by Joe R. Duncan. The Duncan family was eventually forced to sell the house, which is now a museum dedicated to the show. Mary Crosby made TV history by playing Kristen Shepard, Sue Ellen Ewing's scheming sister, on Dallas. Crosby's character was one of several suspects in the shooting of J.R. Ewing, and her reveal as the culprit in the 1980 episode Who Done It became one of the highest rated episodes in TV history. Crosby's character later appeared on Knott's Landing and eventually returned to Dallas, where she was found drowned in the South Fork Ranch swimming pool. He's your father, James. You sure you want to do this to him? Yeah. I thought you'd be jumping for joy. Barbara Bel Geddes, who played Miss Ellie on Dallas, has an interesting connection to Patrick Duffy. Before they worked together on Dallas, Bel Geddes had worked with Duffy's wife's father in her first Broadway play, The Moon is Blue. Meanwhile, Larry Hagman, who played J.R. Ewing, had a favorite co-star from the show, Deborah Renner. Out of the 20 regular characters in Dallas, only three were not related to the Barnes or Ewing families by blood or marriage Carter McKay. Stephanie Rogers, and Liz Adams. Liz Adams, however, was briefly engaged to Cliff Barnes in the 14th season. These details add depth to the show's background, providing insight into the relationships between the actors and their characters. Right. Bye -bye. Larry Hagman, known for his role as J.R. Ewing in the TV series Dallas, made a guest appearance on the spin-off Knott's Landing's second episode in 1979. Interestingly, Hagman's character was the total opposite of who he was in real life, as reported by his Dallas co-star, Ken Kerchival. In the later seasons of Dallas, Hagman held an honorary title as the show's executive producer, although he didn't have executive control. This arrangement came about because the producers had paid him more money. Despite not being heavily involved in the production, Hagman's portrayal of J.R. Ewing left an indelible mark on television history. The original focus of the TV series Dallas was to highlight Victoria Principal's character, Pam, as a mediator between the Ewings and Barnesses. However, Larry Hagman's portrayal of the cunning J.R. Ewing impressed the producer so much that he became the show's main character, leading to a central conflict of Angel Pam versus Devil Jr. Larry Hagman and Barbara Bel Geddes, who played Miss Ellie, had a strong bond initially. However, as Hagman gained more control over the show, their friendship deteriorated, causing Belle Geddes to leave the series during its 13th season. She felt betrayed by Hagman, who she believed was only concerned with saving money, despite their off-screen feud. The cast of Dallas came together to mourn the loss of their co-star and Belle Geddes' friend, Jim Davis, in 1981. Unfortunately, Hagman was the only cast member who did not keep in touch with Belle Geddes after her departure from the show. She passed away in 2005. The counter-revolution. Yes, and I tried to warn Mr. Ewing of his involvement in that. South Fork, the iconic ranch in the TV series Dallas, was a prominent feature in all but five episodes, which were broadcast in 1990. The show's opening credits show the Dallas skyline from the south on Jefferson Boulevard. In season 10, J.R. Ewing's storyline involves attempting to weaken OPEC's influence over oil prices, by hiring mercenaries to blow up oil fields in the Middle East. This plot is loosely based on Texas businessman Ross Perot's mission to rescue American hostages in Iran in 1979. Almost all the prisoners unharmed as promised. Almost? Yes, one man was killed. Larry Hagman, known for his role in Dallas, maintained a close friendship with Patrick Duffy during and after the show. Interestingly, Barbara Bel Geddes had already befriended Duffy's family before the series even began. Their connection dated back to when Duffy's future father-in-law met Bel Geddes in her first Broadway play, The Moon is Blue. In addition, Hagman and Victoria Principal, his Dallas co-star, were lifelong friends before the show started, despite living near each other. This just goes to show the strong bonds formed among the cast members, both on and off screen. You bastard. I'm the only one who's ever done what's right for you. If the 1978 TV series Dallas left an impression on you, we'd love to hear your stories. Share your memories and experiences related to this iconic show. 
Did it make you laugh or cry? Did it inspire you or change your viewpoint? We encourage you to like, share, and subscribe to join our community of cinema enthusiasts. Let's engage in meaningful conversations about the films that have shaped our lives. Your insights and perspectives are invaluable to us. Help us create a vibrant platform where we can all celebrate and explore the world of cinema together. Let's keep the conversation going. You could at least smile. <laughs>